Uh, I mean, kind of on the trend of Monday's talk, I uh, figured there have been quite a few questions, and then I watched a video on this the other day, and it was like, it led me down this path, the YouTube path of fucking chaos and, you know, people saying words that don't really make sense. But I figured we'd, you know, take the day talking about accurizing ARs because uh, more and more people are moving into the AR platforms. It's or not necessarily that more and more people are moving into the AR platforms for longer range shooting. That seems to be like the new, the new thing nowadays. Uh, with the, uh, you know, it's fascinating to see how things are like flowing and everything else. Uh, but before we get started, can you define me? And maybe you're not the nerd for this. <laughs> What the fuck? What's an SPR? What's a DMR? What's a recce rifle? Like, let's just go through them. Um, here's my perception, and it's probably right, and everybody else is probably wrong. So I'm gonna preface it with that. When I picture a an SPR, I'm thinking a Mark 12, which is like an 18 inch SPR. Um, yeah, if you look at the Mark 12, 18 inch AR, you typically have like the tube tubular handguard like the pri uh little suppressor on there when i picture recce i always think 16 inch 16 inch ar-15 which is like a again it's not quite like a like the spr was always like a higher magnification scope i picture so basically a step down from that stands for special purpose rifle yes uh like you said 18 inch barrel more magnified Optic. Yeah, the like the what were those uh, f- f- four to twelve, three to twelve, something. I don't remember. Talking about the lamp hold. My my brain's. I think three three point five to twelve, maybe something like that. I my brain. Three point five to ten. I slept. I don't remember. It's probably something with a parallax adjustment. Yeah. Which is that? Would that be the same thing as like a designated marksman rifle? No. 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 <laughs> so the. Every time I've seen DMR, historically, it's always been like a a seven six two, like a larger frame. Uh, so like a DMR would be like the HK, uh, the, the what is that? The the newer one, the Army gun. The one we have. I always picture like a twenty inch or so. No, shorter shorter than twenty inch, like large frame AR with a scope on it. Gotcha. It's always my DMR in my head. I can't think of a particular one though, because even like the M110 wouldn't be necessarily a DMR. So if you have like an M110 but shorter, but yeah, DMR like 16 inch, 18 inch, 308 gas gun set up for precision. That's I don't know if that's technically right, but that's always. <laughs> so there's DMR, then there's the SPR, which you said is 18 inch, the Mark 12. Like, yeah, but I think everybody knows what the hell Mark 12 is. It's most people not the Daniel, not the Devan, Daniel Defense piece of shit. The real, the real Mark like 12. that one over there. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> it's so the, okay. We got DMR, SPR, Recky. You said it's a 16 inch, yeah. Well, that's how, and I only know that because uh, they always sold uh, Novesco, we sold their 16 inches recon barrel. Um, and I always just remember seeing that. I don't remember what the original. So what Recky rifle was Recky, but it got came like that was a thing back, back in like the early 2010s. But what then, does Recky stand for? Um. Oh God. <laughs> it's British slang for reconnaissance. I got you. So uh, when people are talking about the Recky rigs, it's probably like a 16 inch I always AR with it a LPBO. Like a, yeah, but I think some people consider. Okay, here's. <laughs> Here's a, I don't know what, I don't know what this website is, but the recce class allows a scope up to six X magnification barrel up to 16 inch, one small bag and no bipod. That's what they're considering. No bipod. What the fuck? Yeah. The, I just remember the recce's where people were like basically up suiting their like M4s up to, uh, yeah, it was Leopold pulled two and a half to 10. On Reiki, or the we didn't go back. 
SPR now. So Recky, it seems like Recky and SPR are kind of in the same wheelhouse. Interchangeable, of course. Well, I don't know if they, I don't know if they're <laughs> interchangeable now. <laughs> okay, because the Mark the Mark Twelve originally was a twenty inch barrel. That makes sense, but it became an eighteen. Um, and and there is there another one below Recky? Because uh, now is there? Well, I mean, now there's so many people. Again, well, yeah. Now everything has no meaning because everybody yeah. uses it for everything. Now, like you see, eleven halves, twelve five, twelve halves, like thirteen. I mean, this is my SPR rig <laughs> because they slapped a you know a Mark Five on it or something. He would be like again. I'm not big. I don't know the military at all, but this would be my assumption: is a recce rifle has the high end magnification, probably for observation, but it's more of like a quote unquote fighting rifle. Whereas you were like Mark 12 and all that's more of like an overwatch, you know, setup that isn't crazy big. Right. I think that would be like the distinguishing like trait details. Like you can, you know, you can use the recce rifle for a lot more. But Gotcha. It's just, inter- it's interesting to see again, uh, long range becoming with all the, the red dot boys throwing LPVOs. And uh, uh, MPVOs on their little, you know, thirteen sevens and all that bullshit, and they call it whatever. And I'm just like, and the, it's funny, like they, it seems like they have most of them have like this red dot, red dot magnifier LPVO, and then they step into the MPVOs because they're like they're shooting further now. Yeah, further than twenty and, yards. <laughs> yes, and, and and they're all like. And it's almost like they're big talking like oh, I took my five five six up to five hundred yards. Ugh. I have a I have a different theory. Um red dots like max out at like a thousand dollars you can spend. So when you get into <laughs> optics, there's like another you can spend you know three or four grand. Yeah. And then you, you know you can spend like five, eight hundred bucks on a mount. Yeah. So people just wanted to flex on everybody else. They just started getting to optics so they could have more expensive <laughs> shit to put on their guns so they could post it on the internet. That's my theory. I mean, you're probably right. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> It's it's definitely uh you can definitely it's it's fascinating to me to watch how certain people certain influencers can can sound a kind of I don't know almost like a push the market certain ways especially like someone like Aimbot and he's doing more long range shit and so well I mean it's. Maybe it's just the people I follow and everything else. It seemed like to me. What well, is it? Is it there? This is what I always because it's a very interesting thing, right? Are they pushing it or are they just noticing people moving there? Like, are they more sensitive to it, right? Like, so because right. there's a lot of like that, like you know, in any in any field or history, it's like, oh, that was the guy who was saying it, but it was like, or like he was just the first to identify it, or right. he was. He has such a vocal platform that by the time that he's pointing it out, the market's already moving that way. Yeah. So it's uh And then it just folds onto itself. Like, yeah, because it's all downstream of I mean most of the time is like companies have to be releasing the products. Yeah. I think uh when you look at LPVOs on guns, I mean I remember the only people doing that was it was three gun. Well, that's what really drove that. As a thing, and everybody's like, you can't, you can't put that on a on a fighting rifle, you know. Like people are just being, you know, people. And it wasn't until they showed, like, you know, their pictures out in the wild, you know, the seals or whatever running running them on their guns, and everybody's like, oh, that makes sense. That's a oh yeah, I'm gonna start putting that on my gun. <laughs> and there's always this weird thing with the gun community, especially like the AR community, is like you have to see it on like on an operator in the wild. Right. Same thing with red dots and comps on handguns prior to the, I don't even know if you know what a Roland special is. It was a Roland's a Delta guy. He's now, a, he's now public. It's Chuck Pressburg, Pressburg consulting, but he pictures of his gun were out, like got around the internet and it was a Gog 19 with a big compensator on it and a red dot. And prior to that, it was like, you can't carry a gun with a compensator. You're going to, you know, you're going to ruin your eye shooting it at night. And, you know, the sound, it's going to, you know, you're, you're going to lose all your hearing and that's stupid and red dots aren't good on handguns. But then like his gun got posted and suddenly like everybody had the fucking kick AM compensator and an arm on their gun next, the next week. So it's like, they have to see, they have to see somebody using it and then they'll go, okay. 
You know, like this, <laughs> as soon as the military adopts, it's like, oh, yeah, that's what that's what the Sioux are using. No. I remember having conversations about red dots and pistols. I'm like, yeah, why not? Why wouldn't you? Yeah. And a certain somebody who should, shall remain nameless <laughs> was like, no, 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 no. And then fast forward a year later, meh. <laughs> um, you know, I was I was raised on Magpul Art of the Dynamic Handgun. Uh, I think it was the second one when they started throwing them on there. And that was like, for us, it was always like, duh, you know. I've said it once, said it again. Fuck open sights uh, yeah. on anything and everything. Sure. I mean, I guess if you want to be that person, you can put backup irons. There or- are people who still argue about it on the internet. Though. And it's like all the studies have been done. Like people are faster, better, more accurate with a red dot than they are. The only thing that you have to overcome is retraining yourself to like draw and like pres- like. If you already have poor presentation with a handgun, which a lot of people do and they don't realize it, it's going to show a lot more in a red dot. Yeah. But aside from that, it's like way superior. And there's still people who are just like, well, not like kick coming along, kicking and screaming, uh, not accepting it. I don't know. I just think, uh, meh, get, get optics. They're, yeah. They're so freaking great. I mean, Especially nowadays when there's just a new one coming out every day, it seems. You mean you're telling me it's easier for your brain to see a giant red circle floating <laughs> than using edge contrast on two things that are the same color? Yes. Then you're tr- <laughs> That's what I'm trying you. to achieve precision or accuracy. Imagine if your scope, like you had to hold a, your scope a certain way to line up the two, the stadia. <laughs> and like you could only shoot when the stadium yeah. were lined up. Like everybody would think that's some people stupid. probably need that. <laughs> that's that's true. Uh, oh man, we should just say this conversation for the twelve minute talk about LPVLs. But anyways, uh, yeah, <laughs> just we'll clip it from this. This your twelve minute talk. I mean, you definitely could. You want? Yeah, for sure. You can definitely. I mean, we didn't even like. We just barely started talking about it. So. I mean, we went off on that tangent. You were asking about the classifications. The classifications man. for rifles. Because it kind of plays in because everybody wants to shoot further nowadays. Yeah. You know, that, that seems to be the, the, the new and hip happening thing. And obviously in hunting, we've been shooting further for a while. Uh, in the more the more people like start looking at ARs because of 6 Arc and Valkyrie and all that bullshit, like, I get tons of questions all the time, and we just a lot of times we do these podcasts just to answer questions, and everything else. And one thing that comes up a lot is accurizing an AR. Well, you have the you, you have like I always look at there's like three different fields. So the military shit is all the shit we just talked about, and then you have like the national match guys, which those are what twenty inch barrels, yeah, longer. most of the time, yeah. Um, and then you have like I always think it's like the hunt. It's like a mix, mix match because it was always over there to the side. It's like the six five Grendel people. You know, they're mostly hunters. You know, they were looking for accuracy, too. So it was all, like, coming at it from three different perspectives. Yeah, and, you know, before... I mean, I've got... I've actually made a little uh, little list here so I can... Don't forget to mention things. I'm not going to talk about anything, like... Because, you know, I'm sure you've seen it all the shit, and I'm not going to talk about, like, doing anything mechanical i guess is what you'd say like i guess I, when you say mechanical you mean like, like lapping the yeah the, yeah I, there are certain rifles in the past that i went through it shot like garbage went back and lapped the uh receiver and all that shit and it made a difference now how much of a difference i didn't do that correctly because like i swapped out handguard and shit like that so I'm not even going to speak on that behalf because if you just buy quality shit, probably don't worry about it. Yeah, I think that's kind of the biggest thing that over time that has happened with, again, you and I have talked about this, the firearms market in general, specifically with barrel, specifically with manufacturing, particularly barrel manufacturing, is most things are fairly accurate out of the box these days. Yes. Like you're not having to do... Again, you're not you're not hand loping scope rings anymore. You're not. You la- yeah, you're like all that shit's just a waste of time. Oh, uh, now that like again, like the, you're probably gonna fuck something up doing. You're more nowadays, likely to fuck yes. something up and than you are to fix. Back something. in the day, I mean, 
fuck. I lapped all rings and uh, lapped quite a few receivers on ARs. Uh, did lots of work on uh, receivers on both guns. But nowadays, it's just like machining has gotten so fucking good. Well, you probably don't really need it that much anymore. It's kind of like lap. It goes back to lapping something like a receiver. It's like if you're kind of a, like in today's perspective, if your barrel extension is so off that you're needing to like modify your receiver, like there's another problem there. Yes, you should probably uh, just get rid of that barrel. Yeah. <laughs> now, like I said, it's been years since I've done that. I still got the tool, uh, but and I would like to go and go and buy like some the cheapest fucking ARs and do some testing and then do some testing and see like just lapping the receiver did this have any noticeable real effect i'm sure nowadays it probably won't even on the cheapest of rifles but again i'm going to kind of leave all that shit out because you probably shouldn't be doing it just buy better shit but i mean before i even start down this road of like what i feel is ways to accurize your ar it's kind of like a misleading thing but i'll get into all that i guess it just depends on like uh, the why 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 would you want to accurize your ar because there's a difference between there's a hundred percent difference between the, like the guy's gonna smoke steel and the guy who's gonna smoke steel at long ranges uh but even for me there's certain things i do on like even on short boys uh now given that list is much shorter on the short boys, like home defense style rifles, like let's just say hundred yards and in rifles as opposed to hundred yards and out rifles. Uh, and getting into like all the acronyms, all that bullshit. Like I call anything that's hundred yards in. That's like, that's, that's a home defense slash hog gun for me. Anything that's hundred yards out. That's primarily like a home fence and beyond. Like we get into all like the, I'm not going to call them DMRs and all that other stupid bullshit. Like I, but I do focus on the task at hand. Like I don't build, I don't build too many guns that are just do it all guns. Well, again, that kind of comes back, we've talked about that before. Is like the best way to, like, I want to do X with I. It's like okay, like, what specifically are you gonna, like? Are you going to Alaska to do a bear hunt? Like, right. like, what is the purpose? And that decides pretty much. It makes all the other options make sense. Now, then you can start adding on to that and say, I want a gun that I can hog hunt with, that I can also shoot, you know, this with and do this and be home defense. Yeah, there's there's definitely. But the more of those, like, the more of those things you add in, the. Yeah, I mean, if you if you tell me and you go, <clears throat> I want a home defense rifle that I also want to shoot steel to a thousand yards. Now, <laughs> caveat, I could do that with some of my shorter six arcs. But those two platforms are going to look very different. It's, it's say like this rifle in front of us. Uh, this is my Geisley build we did. Yeah. 20, 20 or 22 inch barrel. I don't remember. Proof barrel. Um, I don't remember this suppressor manufacturer. This is not my home defense rifle. Clearly. This is a hunting rifle slash thousand yard blinker. And it's fantastic for that. But I, I'm still... Now, would I rather have this than nothing at all? Yes. <laughs> is it, yeah. Is it sitting next to my bed? No. Uh, there's there's definitely different ways, but I mean. Oh, well, it comes down to, and, and going back to that, is you have to decide, because again, you get the same questions I do, or people wanting a mix of stuff, and it comes to like, how much, like, are you going to use this more for home defense and want it to be able to theoretically hit a thousand yards at still? Or are you going to be shooting this a thousand yards a lot and yeah. wanting it and wanting to be able to use it for home defense? Cause those two guns look vastly different. Yes. Yeah. hundred percent. And that is the good thing about an AR is it is so much like plug and play, like grown up Legos and everything else, but not nearly as fun as Legos. Though. Gay. <laughs> but before like we even start down this path even further i would have to say like if you're just going for like an accurate ar and you don't you want to dig with building one or you don't want to dig with buying one and changing it up and all their bull crap go with custom manufacturers who specialize in accurate ARs, like long range ars uh much like sergeant of arms and uh dna i don't know of anyone else and i'm sure they're out there like they specifically build 
cater to that crowd, which is yeah, you know, long range, and they give you like sub MOA guarantees and like because th- that's what they do. Uh, yes, they are at the end of the day they are building ARs, but they're doing a lot more than just that. Like they know what parts, what barrel sizes and gas systems and everything else that are going to extrapolate the most amount of accuracy possible. What it comes down to the way we focus on guns versus the way a lot of people do is kind of a, when you're talking not just like precise or accurate AR, you're talking about a long range AR. It's really a large factor of ammunition. So you're building the gun around type, the types of bullets you're going to be shooting at long range Mm -hmm. versus, you know, my, most people who just get an AR, it's, I just want something that can ch- like chew up cheap ammo and then yeah. I can, you know, throw some 75s or 77s in. Yeah. And, uh, ammo is on the list, but further down. Yeah. But I mean, like I said, um, if, if you're looking for that long range accuracy and you just want to pay for it and be done with it, go to companies like that. Cause they're going to, they're going to be able to tell you like down to what stocks, receiver sets, everything else like there. That's what they specialize in. Now, before we even continue down this road, uh, you need, you need to really, uh, check yourself. <laughs> Cause like we could talk about all these things, all the live long day, but if you're a four MOA shooter at hundred yards, you're you're there's nothing you can do on this fucking list to make, the, make your ar shoot better for him away i mean that's just that's the harsh reality and that's harsh truth now there are things you could do to become a better shooter and we've already covered a lot of that in the podcast go look back and everything else i would suggest you being you have to be honest with yourself before you like start spending all this money and doing all these things and everything else well a lot of the, a lot of the money you're spending is to set things up in a way that complement the technique or the uh, the style that somebody who is a certain type of shooter is going to use. Yeah, like it's like you know you get into bipods and stuff, and it's like, well, what kind of bipod are you going to use? And that's going to be really important. But you know, it might be different for this, or it might be different from that. And you know, if you're not using the right technique with the, it, it's not going to work for you. It could be the best goddamn platform in the world if you suck. You suck. Yeah. So. Before we even go any further down this road, check yourself. Because, <laughs> like, I see it many times, like, <clears throat> see it, I see it a lot, way too, even more so on AR, because I will say this. If you set me down with the best, quote unquote, the best uh, AR at shooting grips at 100 yards and the best boat gun at shooting grips at 100 yards, I could shoot that boat gun far better than I can the AR. And it takes me. Bolt gun I could walk away from for a couple months. Pick it up. Five shots down range. I'm back. I'm back. AR, it's a, uh, for myself, it's a, especially when we're kind of, there are certain things that you should be doing the same, but there's a difference between home defense practice and long range practice or bench rest practice on an AR. And again, it depends on the platform and everything else, but it does take more practice to get these things to shoot really well. And uh, the thing I see the most is you take someone who's already not even like a one M away to two M away, hundred yard shooter, which is probably, it's probably, it's probably less common than it used to be, but it's probably way more common than what you'd realize. Uh, and you put them behind like even a good AR such as this one and they still can't shoot, but one M away, one M away. And they're like, uh, you know, it's has a lot to do with you and you know i'm just saying like especially if you're buying quality components and you're putting shit together the right way and all that other bullshit but anyways check yourself don't expect that's that's what i always tell people like don't expect sub in one way actually i have one i'm away shooter that's just those things don't happen i guess what would you say you know with standard ammo like 55 grain fmj and like a standard ar like, what should somebody be able to shoot before? I'm going to say, my personal, I, like, if I'm teaching you to shoot long range, if if the rifle and the ammo is confirmed to shoot one M away and you can't shoot one M away, I don't need, like, we're not even going to talk about long range. We're going to talk about your fundamentals. Or does that fucking rifle have like a seven pound fucking trigger? Does it have like a chrome line ragged out fucking barrel? Like those are just all things like, but 
one him away. I mean, I would want to shoot better, but I don't think it's I don't think it's too much to ask out of any system nowadays if you've done your homework or if you set your rifle up properly or whatever. At least one him away at a hundred yards. That's one inch grip. You know, well, it's technically a little bit over, but let's just say one inch at a hundred yards. If, if if it's anything over that, uh, most of the time nowadays, now there are exceptions, like there could be equipment failures and everything else, but most time, just about anything you get behind nowadays is capable of such. Now, again, there are exceptions to every rule. If like, you're using complete dog shit ammo. Dog shit ammo will bite your ass more than anything else, but there's also like... <sighs> you know, ragged out barrels or shitty barrels or, you know, stuff like that. Like they could really, cause I mean, I've seen it, uh, certain platforms I've seen them just not do very well. And, uh, you just, but most of the time you just keep shooting it. Uh, eventually it'll tighten up to its best, you know, best ability. But I have to say, You know, and I, I put together a list out of like importance for accurizing your AR. And I'd have to say, uh, from everything I've seen, barrel is number one on my list. Is that what do you think? What do you mean? Uh, number one, like a uh, number one importance on my list is the barrel. Like, what, what do I think about that? Like, as far as like, would that be number one on your list? Like, if you say, hey, put together a list of, like, five oh, things yeah, the, 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 from the, well, varying the, importance, top importance being number one. Like, Yeah, if I was shopping parts, 100%, I would be... Like, we're, like that would limit, the like, the, the people I'm, like, going with in terms of... I would be looking at a proof barrel or similar, whether that's steel or carbon. So, I mean... Or, like, you know, I, I, again, I'm, I'm always... I've always prioritized my AR builds with like uh, accuracy. Like I, that's why I was always a big Noveski stainless steel barrel guy. Um, like I want, I want to have a high degree of act cause I'm not, I'm not going to be running around. Like I, I have guns for running around and just mag dumping. It's not the, it's not like my AR. So I mean, even if it, even if I am, so <clears throat> this is where it gets me on this shit. Like even if I am just building a home defense rifle, it, my opinion is I want, even the home defense, I want that bitch to throw ragged holes to one hole groups. Because you think about it from that scenario, like home defense, meaning you're in your house or thereabouts around your house. To me, it should warrant being that much more accurate because, like, the potential is real of shooting someone inside your home. Yeah, well, I, I <laughs> coming out from a realist, realist, realistic perspective, like my life isn't the way of the gun or heat. I don't plan on getting in giant gun fights with like right. 12 magazines. So one of the first things, one of the first things you realize with firearms in general, like when you think about like maintenance and stuff is the, the, the worst thing you can do is overheat in the, any of the parts, particularly the barrel and the chamber. So realizing I'm never just going to, for the sake of it, just burn something down for no reason. Like people, it's such a weird thing that the air community does. Like they have like a fascination <laughs> Yeah. And I think, I think like when people do it in terms of like, yeah, you have like a test gun and you do burn. Like, I like, I like that, but like, I'm going to take the gun that I'm going to, you know, say like use literally to potentially save my life. And I'm going to go burn it down. And I'm not talking about like shooting high round count. I'm just like for the sake of doing it. Right. Um, yeah, no, we're definitely talking about aggorizing, not mag doubling and bars. It's like, um, even if you want to run your stuff really hard, I would rather have multiple rifles that I kind of spread the wear across. Because anytime you lean on anything too hard, again, that heat like that heat can, is going to permanently affect your ability to have an accurate rifle if you overheat it too much. Yeah, uh, it is metal. And yeah, I just I'd rather have something more accurate than not. But I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, I guess what the military finds what form away acceptable? Blah. No. Just fucking no. Uh, but like, I mean, but realistically, like, you know, home defense and, I mean, yeah, like you're fine if one away. I'd want one MOA all day. Well, yeah, if you if you can have it, but I'm, what I'm getting at is, like, you you make the gun as accurate as possible to allow for you to introduce potential. Like, yes, the amount of fuck up you introduce into the system is not 
like if I have a one MOA gate, one MOA gun, and then I'm, I'm, you know, four MOA shooter versus if I have a four MOA gun and I'm a four MOA shooter like that, those stack. Yes. Uh, then you're an eight MOA shooter. You're potentially missing your target. Yeah. Which is why I've always, ever since I started nerding out about this shit years ago, I've always been like, I want this fucker capable of shooting the smallest groups possible because I'm never 100% perfect. Like, everyone thinks they're a goddamn sniper, Chris Kyle. But Don't get me wrong. When I'm saying all this, I think I'm perfect. <laughs> but I want everything, like, I want everything as tight as possible because you're always going to introduce, especially in hunting or, you know, God forbid, like, you get in a scenario where you have to defend your life. Like, there's definitely going to be, like, heart rate increased and everything else like you may be on the bench perfectly calm and everything else a fucking quarter moa shooter but it goes to a one moa in a heartbeat just with a, a fucking heartbeat she practice stoicism just don't care and that'll be fine <laughs> but you know back to the barrel like if if we have a shit barrel shit in shit out i mean this comes this this phrase is going to come back when we start talking about ammo but reality is like this phrase is going to come back almost every subject i touch in because like it's it's cross board shit in shit out so if you get a shitty barrel because it was on sale or whatever uh and it's like it's military spec and like you like he just said like the military spec is like four him away don't expect it to shoot one whole groups if it's goddamn like a well i mean four away is what they i think they're except for shooting which is ridiculous i think but well like, i mean i've definitely seen barrels produce shit Oh, yeah. But if you buy, in my opinion, if you buy good barrels. But even then, most of the barrel manufacturers, which is a ballistic advantage a lot of people use, Criterion's really good. Like, all these barrel manufacturers are produced, like, they should be, yes. if not one of them, they should be right up to one of them capable. Yes. And I haven't seen, other than that goddamn Daniel Defense, I haven't seen a AR barrel, and I've got some, I've got, well, I'll tell you right now, other than that Daniel Defense, I don't know what it is. All my barrels nowadays are fucking uh, some variation of stainless, whether it be the proof, like that's in stainless internals. Uh, Novaski, uh, my ballistic advantage are stainless. Uh, I got, I've got several at this point, but like I stick with stainless. because, And it's not so much because I believe it's a better barrel, although it probably is, but cleanability i've noticed over the years like yeah crazy i clean my shit but i've noticed that stainless seems to fucking clean much easier than like a generic carbon barrel a yeah. uh, carbon steel barrel it, that's literally like what really took me down the path of like running stainless or and you know these proof barrels are stainless internals it's essentially a stainless barrel that's wrapped in carbon but just buy a quality barrel like it's if you're going to spend your money, like I'd rather have a quality barrel, like a ballistic advantage, a stainless barrel, and a cheaper receiver set. That's just my opinion. Well, yeah. And, well, if, it's I, not, if I have to spend, you know, save yeah, money the, the most of the money should go to the barrel because that's just, but it's also not just the, it's the type of barrel you get. And that's why I've almost, I've almost always preferred like a shorter and stiffer barrel than like, you know, most people think, well, oh, it's long range good. I need a long barrel. No. And it, I mean, it really comes down to, again, ammunition type, what you're going to be shooting out of it. Like the, you know, I mean, if selection. you want to shoot over 100 yards and 308, you better get a 24 inch barrel. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> God damn. <laughs> uh, Always got to throw those in there. So, I mean, quality barrel made, made number one on my list. And it, that's a, that was a hard one for me because I was like, hmm. Because I, I mean, again, a lot of things are changing. Machining is getting better and everything else. Like hand guard becomes a thing. Stock becomes a thing. Trigger becomes a thing. It was hard for me to really think on that. Like what is my number one most important thing? And I just, I kept coming back to barrel. Cause like you could build like, again, take this entire platform. It's really nice. looks good. It's, you know, great rifle. But if you put a shit in barrel in it, like it's probably never going to do any better than one MOA, two MOA, you know, and I've not had many chrome line barrels. The the what is the, the deal behind them? Like they last longer. Yeah, high run count. But are they are they known for not being as accurate? What well, introduces? Yeah, it, it it introduces because you have that layer in there is going to affect the accuracy theoretically. 
and I don't have, you know, maybe one of these days we'll like get in deep dive barrels in particular. I would love to like just buy. The thing about it is you would have to buy like five barrels of each category, yeah. which I mean, it's fucking AR barrels, unless you're buying a proof carbon wrap, like they're not that expensive. I would, it'd be interesting to see because I have had fantastic accuracy results out of just regular carbon steel, cheap ass barrels. Now I haven't tested enough of them <laughs> to say like, no, they're fine, but I, I've had way better success out of, uh, some sort of stainless steel barrel, but there, there's so much shit out nowadays and there's more and more coming out. One of these days, like I just want to buy a fuckload of of five barrels each, of uh, sixteen inch, two two three barrels, and we just do this extensive fucking test on, see if you can extract any sort of like, okay, this stainless barrel's better, or you know whatever. But there's so many different ways you can go with this. Uh, just get just go with a reputable barrel manufacturer. You're probably gonna be okay. Like again. Ballistic Advantage, one of my favorites. Proof, obviously, one of our favorites. Uh, I have, not in a tactical sense, but in a hunting sense, the uh, BSF barrels on the boat guns and the ARs had fantastic luck as far as accuracy is concerned. Now, I know there's questions about their system for an AR and all that bullshit, but um, no, my Noveskis tend to shoot good. Proof, Ballistic Advantage. Well, it comes down to also, I mean, we talk about accuracy or long range, uh, the barrel profile. Yeah. I th- and that's that's one of the biggest differences versus just building a, you know, a standard AR where a lot of people are going to prioritize going with a lighter weight barrel. Yeah. Is having something that is uh, a little bit thicker, primarily towards the chamber. Like, that's the biggest difference that I'm going to be selecting for. Yeah. Which, I mean, again, nowadays, uh, there's, there's several barrel... Again, what is actually what is what is the job at hand? That that's gonna that's gonna what's gonna be the deciding factor for myself as far as what contour. Like if I'm prairie dog shooting or only long range shooting, uh, I'm going with a fat contour barrel. Like well, yeah, it's it's an, a thick obviously boy. it being more of a factor of like how long do you want it to like maintain accuracy or hold yeah, the group? For because if it's if it's strictly a hunting gun, that's a different consideration than I'm going to go shoot a gas gun match. Yeah. You know, with. It's, you know, there's shit. Maybe we need to do a whole barrel podcast someday, like on the contours and everything else. I didn't even think about that aspect. I was just, I was going to leave it. Just like, don't, just, go, don't go with the pencil <laughs> barrel. That'd be the, then it, most, most of the barrels you're going for, if it is advertised as like accuracy or long range or longer barrels, they're going to be, you know, because SPR, SPR is, I believe, a contour, right? Is that? Oh, right? shit. I don't know now. There's so many different shit. As much of the, so many of your AR barrels are going to be that government profile or anything else stupid. Uh, yeah. Just typically you're, you don't need a, like a, like a Colt H bar profile, but most of the barrels that you're buying that are specified are going to have the right contour. So you don't need to put, pay too much attention. Yeah. You just don't want it to be, when you look near the chamber side of it, if it's super skinny, it's not going to be good for long uh, round count, like high strings yeah. of fire. Oh, I mean, there is. Uh, I, w- I want someone to make like a <clears throat> fourteen five, and they probably do. I just hadn't looked hard enough. Stainless fourteen five pencil barrel for like a flat out. Because I want to build one of the next builds I want to do is like a super super lightweight uh, pig blaster. Yeah, but or cow blaster even, but. Well, it's kind of, and a lot of people might not realize that that's effectively when you get into these, whether it's BSF or proof barrels, they are really skinny pencil barrels that through different methods with proof, they, uh, it's like an epoxied carbon that they put there. Mm -hmm. And on BSF, it's actually a a carbon fiber sleeve or like, yeah, like a torqued. Yeah. And it basically tensions against that barrel. And the reason, the reason the carbon fiber is there is because it's very, uh, stiff and rigid for its weight so you're getting that like stiff rigidity of a of a of a thick profile barrel on a pencil barrel so without, it doesn't have the warp or the distortion without the weight yeah of like <clears throat> of the steel barrel that's com- comparable to its size and that you know i don't know that i do, i don't know i don't know you what your our listeners pocketbooks look like 
I wouldn't get pr- uh, carbon wrap barrels anything for like a mag dumper. Oh it's, no, it's just it costs more. Uh, hunting absolutely one hundred percent. Or I mean, if you just like the look, like this looks good on this rifle. I don't. This isn't like a, a rule of thumb, but a lot of people will say after about like a ten shot string, carbon barrels start to perform worse than an equivalent barrel. I don't. Again, gonna, that's just that's what people to, say on the internet. So just we're gonna know, have take to that. fucking go. Again, this is just another thing I want to deep dive. Uh, you know, just buy a good barrel. Uh, it's open. Those are just companies that I know for sure. Like I've got a few Odin stainless barrels. I don't know who makes their shit, but they've been great. Uh, all my proof barrels been great. I know you probably have messed with them. But barrels. The, uh, <clears throat> Rainier Arms has their like match and ultra match lines. Those are. I don't think I have any of those. I, I back in the day, I built a ton of guns with those. My, I mainly have. Uh, nowadays, anyways, I mainly have ballistic advantage and proof like my main ones i have the most of currently ballistic advantage is just they got so many good options nowadays and you know i've i've had nothing but good luck out of their their barrels yeah. uh, i've probably built or some of the rifles i bought i know have ballistic advantage barrels like all of them are fantastic shooters so you know pretty hard to beat that but god dang i lost my note i mean i think that's good enough on barrels just buy a good quality barrel do your research you'd be surprised how many of the barrels are made from the same manufacturers yes who are, that's what i was about to say you know labeling them for other companies yes uh <laughs> so what's your on an accurate ar what's the shortest you're going typically 14.5 play 14.5 and it's not due to the i think that you know a shorter barrel wouldn't be as accurate because technically the shorter it is the more rigid it's going to be but the shorter it goes, the velocity, the, you know, velocity comes into effect. Barrel twist comes into effect. Like fourteen five. I don't know. I want to do a thirteen seven, but I'm trying to see if I can get the Valkyries to spin up in thirteen seven or fourteen five. Because if it was like twisted right, it'd be badass. Theoretically, you know, the shorter it is, the more rigid it's going to be. Especially if like you compare the same size contour, like whatever, OD, same OD. 20 inch versus the 16 inch. If they're the same OD, the 20, the 16 inch is going to be more rigid, i.e. more accurate technically. But I'm not going to, you know, you know, what's your, again, what's your task at hand? If like home defense slash hunting, um, and you really want to do a 13, seven or 13, five pin muzzle device, get after it. <laughs> you know, that's, there's, there shouldn't be now pay attention what twist right because like if you have every intention i want to run 68 or 75 and somehow you end up getting a 13 5 or 13 7 that's like fucking you know one nine twist like that's probably not gonna work out that great you want something that at least one seven maybe even one six and a half it depends on what size projectile you want to run but anyways i don't really have one you know some shit just don't make sense yeah, and I guess I, I throw a disclaimer up is accuracy versus long range. Like, you can build a short gun that's accurate, like, within 100 versus without it being optimized for long range. Yeah, I mean, it, it depends on the cartridge. It 100% depends on the cartridge uh, where I go with barrel length. And, uh, again, what my intended use is. Because, like... The, again, the cool thing about these newer cartridges, such as the Valkyrie or the Arc, is you can still get greater long-range performance out of these short barrel platforms. Because you know, the whole reason like this comes up so much is there's so many of these guys with the thirteen sevens and fourteen fives like push them out longer range now, and I'm just like, if you just look at the right fucking cartridge, like you wouldn't, because most of the time it goes like. I could do this with my 14.5, whatever, but 500 yards, like max range. It's like, look at the fucking six arc. Yeah. <laughs> like I would much rather have the six arc if we're talking about shooting, you know, people size as targets. Uh, but it's performance. Yeah, if, 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 if cost wasn't a consider, like if you were to remove cost and availability out of there and you were to just like back to back these things, there would yeah. be no reason for you to really stay with a 223. Yeah. No, and again, there's nothing wrong with, 
if you're like, ah, you know, I only want to shoot longer ranges sometimes, whatever, just peel a whole other gun. Like, have your fucking, you know, 12 5, 13 5, whatever, that's got a red dot or magnifier or whatever, and that you're going to mag dump it burns, but have a total different rifle. You don't have to make everything fit everything. Like, I don't, you know, and you could, you could do the one route where you have different uppers, which you know, I, I tried that. <laughs> but I end up just building new fucking no, rifles. No, the, the top part is the most expensive part. <laughs> like there is there is a certain aspect to it that I want to and again I attempted to do this, but I ended up just building all different rifles that I want to explore as in uh having a lower and then having a like three different uppers in a six arc. Like one with a thermal, one with a daytime scope, like different barrel lengths for different jobs and have fully rigged out suppressed suppressor for like, each one. Why not just have the lower like the? Well, as far as like mobility for myself, yeah. like when I go hunting, I already, already taking a bunch of shit. It would just be handy to have, okay, this trip, I'm, I'm just going to carry one lower and these three uppers. Cause I know I'm be doing these three different jobs. Obviously one of the uppers would be like a backup, but <laughs> But you know, most time I it just find gives me myself, anxiety because it's like through. Oh, I don't know if you've seen people who do this. They'll have like ten uppers, but like they all share like one or two optics. I couldn't do that. And that just gives me like the most amount of anxiety. Couldn't do that, even though a lot of the mounts nowadays are more than capable of like you know that being a thing. But no, you're gonna have to, just, you're gonna have to still. I can't. I can't. You're still gonna that. have to rezero because you're putting it on like a new. I can fucking get behind the. Again, it all falls like I got. The, I, can, I can now that you said it. I could see one situation, and it's having a thermal upper. Yeah, because that's like that's the biggest waste of like a thermal gun is just yes. Like, that's all it can do is just thermal. Yeah, and I don't want to have to fucking mount and remount thermals. Uh, yeah, I mean that's that's what I really want to do is like do a six arc that has a let's say a eighteen inch upper with a you know three point six to eighteen. Or like the BDX three to eighteen, yeah, and then have a uh, let's say a fourteen inch upper with a thermal, and then have something like in the middle with LPVO, maybe a sixteen inch upper with LPVO, it, because and I say this because I finally got the fucking <laughs> this is so stupid the way I justify shit, I finally found uh, one in stock the 511 bag I want the one that you can unzip the bottom and it's a rifle case yeah well now I'm like I want this to be that that go hunting bag that's all I throw in the truck which means I have you know enough room there to build this three uppered AR that'll all fit in there to where I don't have to carry like it's not, I can't help who I am. Normally, I end up carrying multiple guns. Sometimes it's warranted because I want to fucking test out new ammo or whatever. But I always at least carry two. Like, I got to have one that I'm probably going to use in a backup. And the majority of the time, it's three because I have a nighttime gun, daytime gun, and then I have a backup. <laughs> but I just, you know, I'm envisioning in my mind like this, this six arc. <laughs> multi-use setup again all the same suppressors i'm not i don't even want to fucking change suppressors just three suppressors three uppers one lower uh but anyways you know kind of going off on tangent there <laughs> my next on my list after barrel would be and yeah, we kind of caveated into it receiver sets because i've seen you know like you said the guy who has 47 uppers and one lower. Uh, I can't do it. Now, where I can do it is if, like, you have matching uh, upper and lowers, meaning same manufacturer, and you know they fit good. Past that, like, and I don't know if it's more some of my OCD, like, it's hard for me. Oh, well, actually, the upper <laughs> and lower receiver slop doesn't have any effect on accuracy. Uh, Get fucked. <laughs> it's... It's not even, I wasn't even going to get to that yet. It's just the fact that when I have uppers and lowers that don't match, it bothers me for some reason. Yeah. they. I just want them to match. Now, I do have a few because I don't give a shit on like certain bullshit guns, but 
I want the, I want the the best possibility of them being a tight fit. Yeah, it's nice. Like I can get over a little bit of like the slop. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, a little bit. Uh, but I love like, and this is everybody who to everybody who you like use the AccuWedge or any of that shit. Which a lot a lot of receiver sets now have the essentially yes. the little pin that goes up to the the rear yeah. takedown the bottom it's through your pistol grip. Yeah, I love that. Oh, uh, I think yeah, they should all have that. But there's there's nothing nice when you get like a perfectly like tight. Yes, and that's a uh, receiver. If again, if I'm building like a long range precision platform, uh, I like billet over forged for like again long range precision platform. It's going to be heavier. Typically, they are uh, the billet builds, and they're going to be like I want matched receiver sets. Like I want the tightest goddamn fit I can possibly get. Whether it be again, most of the time the billet shit is a little bit tighter. We're talking like very generic here, but like the billet shit, like it's it's going to be a little bit heavier, a little bit bigger, and they're going to be pretty goddamn tight fit. And like I want, I want something that's like they're mated from the factory. Yeah, it's really, I mean, again, at the end of the day, when you build a rifle up and it's like, you can like r- rattle it around and there's no noise, like that's. Yes. That's what my not, OCD There's was. not a, again, every little thing, when we're talking about, you know, accurizing an AR, every little thing matters. Cause like, yeah, I got a four MOA barrel. Yeah, my upper and lower don't match and they're wonky as fuck. And yeah, I got this, you know, this awful fucking trigger. And yeah, I got this uh, you know, shitty hand guard. I got the shitty butt stock. I just don't understand why I won't shoot really good and accurate. It's like, well, uh, it's fucking literally everything and probably yourself as well. But Well, yeah, that's the thing like it's all it's all tolerance stacking and you get Yes. Like, yeah, the upper lower receiver if you're shooting in like a consistent manner consistent position like it's probably not gonna matter but are you shooting in a consistent position you know like <laughs> it, it gets into that uh, again it's unless you like stack an upper and lower that just don't like each other whatsoever it's pretty hard nowadays to get them like i remember back when i first got my first ar uh some of the shit you got was pretty fucking like some of the cheap shit was pretty bad but like I said, nowadays it's not it's not as much as an issue. But I am, am gonna I am gonna kind of harp on it, like at least match the brands. I suppose like if you want them to fit together good, you want it to be pretty tight. And you know the the great thing about the lowers nowadays is they have that I don't know what they call that the fucking the extra screw in the pistol grip that you can run up and yeah. tighten your shit up, you know, be sure and check your fucking takedown pin before you snug her on down. But, <laughs> but even if you don't have that, they have the, the Accu wedge, which kind of, it's same purpose. It just like tightens same the tensions premise. back there. Although and, it can often make it a fucking un, like, yes, impossible to open your, your pivot. Pin. Yes. But, or not uh, your pivot pin, your takedown pin. Yeah. Be, be careful. But I do, you know, maybe you have kind of like old receiver set and you want to use it and, you're like, I mean, I just, I want my shit a little bit, a little bit tighter. Uh, try a fucking AccuWedge. Uh, you know, anything that'll tighten it up, the better. Uh, like, like you said, tolerance stacking. If you, ta- if you stack all these awful tolerances, by the time you get to the user, it's just like, what well, have everything have? going in your way as much as you can. Yeah, and like I said, again, it was hard for me I to mean, pick number two. If war ever breaks out, it doesn't matter because you're just gonna get. Uh, FPV droned to death. Yeah. So like, your upper yeah. lower fit's not going to matter too much. You know, I I, th- I put it on there because I, I just felt like it, it's probably more my OCD. Again, this is a hard list to put in, put together in, in what my perceived importance ratings. But I just I don't know. I finally decided on receiver set being a good fit or using a wedge block or with the screw and the receiver. I just think everybody should adopt the screw and receiver and be done with it. I mean, yeah, that seems like the, the best way to go. And you know, some of them, some of them actually have their threaded for it and they don't come with a screw, uh, find the screw, you know, if it's wonky, I mean, if it fits good, like if you're buying higher quality shit, most of the time it fits together. Good. Just been my experience, but so, And it, you know, like I said, it doesn't matter if if you're putting together a new rifle or you're, you know, 
you have an old receiver set or you have an old rifle that you're going to strip down and rebuild because you want it a little bit more accurate, uh, you can address the receiver set. Uh, if it's paint, a paint job, <laughs> <laughs> if it's an old receiver set, you know, it may be a little bit wonky. So replace never hurts. Like this, this shit don't cost a lot. Replace all the pins and bullshit on it. Like replace all the bullshit on it. If it's wonky, like replace your takedown pins and all that kind of bullshit. Your trigger pins, like just fucking strip everything down and replace it all. It doesn't cost that much. Put all those shit in. Like you want to tighten that bitch up. Cause again, tolerance stacking. I, I'd have to say my number three. Now, number two and number three were hard to like decide which one was my most important. And I feel like probably number two uh, should have been triggers, but it made number three. Cause like I started really thinking about it. Like some of these ARs that got wonky ass receivers. Some people put together some wonky ass shit, but trigger highly important. Uh, you can have the, you know, the greatest rifle in the world. If you have a fucking mil spec seven, eight pound fucking trigger, which nowadays are getting better as well. Uh, if you have a shit fucking trigger, it's going to be hard to shoot it good or accurate or make it, make it more accurate or whatever. And trigger is pretty, it can be a pretty expensive upgrade. Uh, if you're cheap ass, I guess. But I mean, if you start thinking about this, like if I built this AR, it's fucking $350 a hand guard, arca rail barrel, barrel sub thousand dollars, the PRS light, or whatever that is, two fifty, like everything considered, like what's a fucking two three hundred dollar trigger? I have but two recommendations for our triggers nowadays because I've tested shitloads and I've just about broken all of them, or I've seen most of them fail, with the exception, Trigger Tech and Geisley. <laughs> yeah, know. I know you and I disagree. I hate uh, drop in style triggers. Love them. <laughs> it's not it's it's not what he intended oh it. god you're such a fucking boomer <laughs> he designed it a certain way i don't give a shit it's brilliant that, that tech. the hammer springs <sighs> capture your your t- your a trigger pit it's it's brilliant it seems like such a stupid thing to do <laughs> no it's, it's he's a fucking genius uh, yeah for the time anyway uh <laughs> i'm a i'm a big geisley whore and it's really hard for me to try anything else I just, I'm either nowadays I'm like Geisley or uh, I still need to try tag. the trigger deck. Um, yeah, because you're nice. You told me it's nice, and then I have one of the Q triggers. Literally uh, the best trigger. Oh, ever made. when I was pulling all nighter Sunday night, uh, obviously I was going through how many fucking parts I have. You're fucking. Hard. I'm about to no. I'm about to go on a massive sale. I'm gonna. I'm gonna sell some. I'm gonna. I'm even gonna sell some guns. Yeah, I know it hurts to it hurts to say out loud. Like I don't that. know what the fuck, who you are and what you're saying right now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sell a bunch of shit because I have so much stuff. It's a good step for a hoarder. <laughs> I told you I threw away a bunch of stuff. I've thrown away. I don't know. You probably saw the trailer. There was a bunch of bags. Keep going. Um, declutter your life. But I yeah I, I ran across. I forgot I had gotten a Q trigger. So that's the problem I have is I get new things, but I like like it's hard for me to put it like because I already have like. It's like I ha- I, if I get a new trigger, it's hard for me to put that in a gun. Like I'm like I'm gonna have to build a gun around this trigger. Oh, I want to do that same shit. Yeah, I, I, know. Say that about that. <laughs> I was gonna say like uh, so that trigger's been sitting there, but I was like, it would be really interesting. I was because you know it's literally it's called literally the best trigger. I was thinking we could do a video that would be like literally the best trigger review in the world, <laughs> and we just get a bunch of guns, and like you just do it at Ally, we, like bring random people in and have them shoot like all the guns, and like what's the like what was your favorite trigger like blind. Right. And like, see what stacks up where. Right. Um, I, I'm going with Trigger Tech or uh, Geisley. Which, which Geisleys do you like? This one. Which one's that? <laughs> I don't know. The flat shoe with the light. I don't know. I really need to fucking go back and look because I've gotten, I've tried so many now. I really need to go back and look and figure out which one's my favorite. I need you to, cause you probably never shot one, the Super Dynamic 3 gun. I think I have one. I think I have all the different Geisleys made. Okay. That again, one, it's it's did, hard for me to... Did we? Did you build that one with when I got all the other shit? Because I'm trying to think. I may have... That might be the... No, I built this later. Okay, because I had the one that's the... Because you like their national match trigger. What was the... I think it's the SPR trigger. God. Are they going to say on it somewhere? 
Probably. Because I've gotten, I've tried quite a few different guidelines. And- Honestly, I like all of them. I, I start with like a super dynamic enhanced, which is like the SSAE. It's, so it's, it's like a typical trigger, just lighter. Like same like everything, but uh, yeah, they're all, they're all really good. I really like the, again, I like the Geisleys. But the fucking trigger tag for it's at. Bolt gun, you know, fuck, fuck everything else at this point. Bolt gun and AR trigger tag for it's at. I really like all the trigger tags. It's a drop in. <laughs> but they also have screws that go down to the bottom that yeah. wedge it up against the pins. I was going to say, I think most of them do that now. I don't know. I don't know. Nowadays, I'm, I don't It's been know. a while since I've installed a drop in. Maybe the last one I installed was a trigger tag. But I, I just. So I have some of their higher dollar AR triggers, but I just got one of their three and a half pound lower cost ones. I put that in Ava's gun. It's fucking good. And it's nice. Yeah. I mean, I'm with you because I exclusively shell trigger tech on. Uh... They're, they're, they come on scene and I just don't see anybody fucking beating them. Like I just... Ooh, MCX trigger. Yeah. But anyways. So you use the, the red one. I have the red one, and I have... Is that the one on the left, the newest one? Yeah. I have the one on the left. Is the red one diamond? Okay, there's three different ones. There's a three and a half pound fixed, two and a half to five pound adjustable, and 1.5 to four pound adjustable. I think I have the 1.5 to four adjustable. I, don't, I have so many fucking different AR triggers. Daddy likes a light trigger. <laughs> I do. <laughs> but I mean, I've, I've got so many different ones, and I need to... I really need... Like, there's one in this fucking... 14.5 here I like it but I can f- it's it's n- I can't remember if it's a drop in or not it is a drop in whoever makes that one it's fucking garbage like I can feel the fucking springs in the bitch and I really think it's a CMC but I don't remember I need to pull it out and drop in a trigger tag but anyways all right, triggers all right CMC sorry <laughs> no I do have <laughs> it probably isn't them they're just like fuck <laughs> No, I think I'm pretty sure it's CMC. I do have another CMC that I really really like in one of my other guns, one of my other billion fucking guns. Uh, but I don't know which one. Like, I didn't keep track of well, what's let's, let's what. Let's be honest here. Even the best AR trigger, it's not a bolt gun trigger. Mm. Mm. So the fucking trigger tags are knocking on that door, Jack. Like, I'm they're that to, fucking good. <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to go look. They're that fucking good. Uh <laughs> I have not put again as much as I like the Geisleys. Uh, I have not pulled a fucking AR trigger that's as good as a trigger tag. Like again, it, I guess I probably like it so much because it reminds me so much of a boat gun trigger, uh, and it it will reset properly, <laughs> like some of the earlier lightweight triggers uh, on ARs draw pants. Again, quality trigger, loose you know, lighten up the pull weight. Uh, but be careful like there's a lot of fucking ar triggers there's a lot of dropping ar triggers i've got quite a few of them uh chances are uh, i think just about every like again i'm not even gonna name all brands because i've tried so many of the cheaper drop-in ar triggers 90 percent of them have fucking broke or fucked up or you know something happened to them there's a reason why they're generally speaking there's a reason why they're cheaper and with the new trigger tech, that three and a half pound being like $130 or 150 whatever the shit it is. If you're gonna if you want a cheaper drop in, just fucking go that route. Because trigger tech's got something figured out. But I mean, if you want to go on the higher the upper end, like really okay, I'm putting together a fancy fucking rig and I want a really good trigger. Guys that are again trigger tags. So those are my top picks. And you know there's so many different routes, but trigger can make or break a platform. Cause if your fucking trigger weight is heavier than the goddamn rifle, you're probably not going to be able to shoot it too well. Just my opinion. Now, again, it comes down to like the the longer and heavier it is, the more chance you have to fuck it up. Yes. Yes. Uh, Absolutely. You don't want it. There are certain circumstances where you don't want it too too light. Like, yeah, you because if you're not prepared, like you get into some of those light triggers. I think of the Hulk. Yeah. And you're like, like, if you haven't, if you're not used to shooting that rifle and you get up, that's why I really do like a two stage. Cause you get to that second wall and you like, no, like, okay, I'm here. Like, that's just me. Right. 
triggers. Uh, Geisley, trigger tech, my my picks. Uh, but I don't give a shit. Uh, just do your research. Pick a good trigger. Get rid of the fucking factory 48-pound trigger. It's, again, you could take... Uh, I've replaced several triggers and multiple raffles that are supposed to be good, quote unquote, good triggers for a little bit lighter trigger. Because, like, again, if the fucking trigger weight is heavier than a goddamn rifle, then you're probably not going to be able to shoot it to its utmost capability. Just replace trigger, put something good in there. And, uh, you know, again, think about a lot of people are fucking cheap out in the wrong places. Think about, like, what you've put into the platform. If I've built this rifle and I've spent two thousand dollars, because nowadays if you, especially if you build good quality components, pretty fucking easy to get in two thousand dollars on a rifle, even AR nowadays. Again, we're talking quality components, but don't put a fucking hundred dollar trigger in. Don't put a goddamn, uh, you know, mil spec trigger. Like just fucking buy a good trigger. I don't, you know, whether you be a drop in or Geisley or whatever the case may be, just put a good fucking trigger. My last, well, it's not technically my last. It's my next one would be the stock. It's not much of a thing, as much of a thing nowadays as it seems like it was when I first got in, like, started buying ARs, when you still had a lot of mil spec and what was the other? Uh, is it pertains to buffer tubes, mil spec and commercial? Yeah. It doesn't seem as. As much of a fucking issue nowadays as it used to be. Yeah, you're pretty much fine. Almost everything's going to be mil spec these days. But choosing the right stock for the application is highly important. Now, nowadays it seems like it's as much of an issue as it used to be, where it's like you had your mil spec and uh, commercial and all that bullshit, like where you could potentially run into like a wonky ass fucking stock. But I will recommend, like, what are you doing with the platform? What stock should you go with? Because especially in AR stocks like this is a obviously a longer range platform it's a longer barrel it's a six arc it's meant for hunting and long range shooting it's 20 20 or 22 inch barrel remember I would never put like a Magpul CTR on it uh, especially with the angle of the bottom of the CTR that was that would not yield itself very well to riding on the back which is primarily what this rifle is going to be doing that's why I went with the Magpul PRS light on this stock because it has a nice gradual uh, angle here for the bag rider portion of the, the stock. That said, I would never put this stock on a like a 16 inch, couple hundred yard AR platform because, you know, what would be the point of that? Unless I was building a shorter uh, precision AR platform. Again, like take a look at the stocks. Build your list again. Here comes the list thing. Build your list on what you're intending on doing with that platform because chances are it's going to tell you what length barrel, what exact trigger you want, what optic you're looking for, uh, what what quality of the upper and lower again, billet versus forge and everything else, and then especially the butt stock. Because again, if I want to shoot tiny groups out of an AR 15 platform. Other than making sure I have a quality platform, the stock is very important. And so, again, this rifle, actually, this AR right here is the most accurate, precise AR I own. Just turned out that way. And a lot of it has to do with the stock because the stock yields itself really good to me getting a good, solid, you know, cheek weld and a good, solid position with my bag and everything else. Like, it just... This butt stock does it for me when we're talking about shooting tiny groups or shooting long range and everything else. B5 makes theirs that's kind of supposed to be like, I guess, the direct competitor to this. I don't like it as much as the PRS light, but it still has a lot of attributes that are what I'm looking for in this type of platform. And there's a reason. I should have put one up here. Oh, there's one right here. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, there's a reason why I like the Magpul MOE stocks, the MOE line. Because this gradual, I mean that's okay. Uh, well, it's MOE, yeah. And there's SLK, SL. Well, MOE is Magpul original, or something, right? Or playing equipment. 
Yeah. When I, all their new MOE stocks have this gradual line right here. There's the, the SLM, SLK, and then there's the full length one, which I don't remember what the fuck it is. It may just be the MOE. There's a reason why I like that over the B5s and all that bullshit or the CTRs or anything like that is because this gradual line here, this is a good stock for just a, like a do-it-all carving where I'm going to be hunting or if I want to sit down and shoot groups, they fit good and tight. And this gradual line right here yields itself good to shooting off of a bag as well, whereas like a B5, it doesn't. Or a CTR definitely doesn't. Like you're... You're going to be looking at aftermarket parts to make those good for shooting off bag or just literally resting the bag on the freaking buffer tube. And that, you know, maybe we can pull some more. I mean, we probably should pull some stocks in here and observe them for a 12 minute talk. Like, you know, what rides a bag good and what doesn't. Because before doing this, like, I really sit down and like went over this stuff. All my ARs and like my best shooting ARs, what were pros and cons and everything else. Again, developing my list and of importance. And it kind of led me down this, this path of like really looking at stocks and recoil impulses based off of the stock alone, based off suppressors. And that's a whole nother fucking podcast. And I'm going to get into it. But we'll say, take a look at your stock. And if you have a wonky ass fucking stock, again, that's just introducing more variables into your platform, thus cutting down on its uh, accuracy. Same thing can be said for a, uh, you know, run and gun type setup or a, a thermal setup or home defense, whatever. Like if you don't have the right stock for the situation, it's just not going to work out good, you know, and, I thought about putting pistol grip here, but maybe that's a different conversation for a different day. I like more vertical pistol grips. It's, it's obviously going to be biased towards that direction, but I just placed more importance on the, the stock over the pistol grip. Cause again, it could make a break situation. Like if you have the wrong stock, that doesn't fit your, I hate saying shoulder pocket. Cause that's not necessarily where you should be holding a rifle, but choose the right stock for the job. And then, you know, uh, if you can look at a few, uh, make the list pros and cons, like that'll help you ultimately make a better decision. But anyways, just don't get, uh, if for whatever reason you have like a mil spec car uh, buffer and a commercial, whatever, I don't remember what the, one of those don't fit where the she had, I think it was like a, back when you could find a lot of commercial stocks they were was it they're really fucking loose on the mill spec buffer the, tube or was it vice yes. versa i don't remember commercial now. tubes have a lar larger diameter that's right that's right it, it's not so much of a fucking issue anymore as it used to be like it used to like you better be careful what the fuck you're grabbing uh there's still some commercial stocks out there uh we actually fucked up and ordered some not that long ago i didn't even know anybody had any but apparently there's still a few out there i just know like Back in the day, you had to pay very good attention to what you was buying. But again, without the right stock, you can, you know, B5 swap mod, probably a highly popular stock for uh, the magged up and environment boys because they fucking use them in the military. Fucking absolutely hate those stocks for uh, any kind of precision shooting. Just my opinion. Uh, just fucking buy a Magpul and be done with it. <laughs> And second to last on my list is buy a suppressor. I'm not saying you could take like a four MOA barrel and put a suppressor on it and it's going to turn into a one MOA barrel. What I am saying, same thing I've always said, is uh, affixing a suppressor onto your rifle. Who gives a fuck about the benefits of the rifle? I've never seen it degrade accuracy or precision on a rifle. I've never seen it once. But I have seen it help the shooter. I've seen it to where it, did, it didn't change like the overall groups of rifle platform. But I've seen it multiple, multiple times change the the shooter itself. Like uh, inherently, especially if you're running a break or whatever, you're going to have this flinch built in. If you start running a suppressor, a lot of that's going to go away. It's going to reduce the recoil and everything else and the sound and everything, all that bullshit. 
Just buy a goddamn suppressor and make you a better shooter all the way around. Just saying. Last, and I, I probably should have moved this up the list because we talked about it very early on. Ammo. But I was very conflicted on where this landed on the list because you could take the best ammo in the world if you have a shit barrel or a sh- you know shitty platform. It's only going to be capable of so much. But in the inverse or whatever, I don't know how you'd fucking actually say that. You can take the best platform and put shit in, you'll get shit out. Like, it doesn't matter how great the fucking rifle is. If you put shit in it, it's going to feed shit out. Like, there are, like, there are uh, caveats, I would suppose. Like, uh, you know, maybe because your rifle is so good that this shit a- ammo will actually shoot fair. Or... You know, you're just not going to be able to extract the most amount of accuracy and precision out of the platform if you don't have good ammo to go with it. Like, don't fucking go buy some government surplus bullshit FMJs like that's 48 years old and feed it through like a, you know, precision machine and expect like miraculous results. Uh, that's just not going to happen. So, feed it good ammo. If you want it to shoot good, feed it good ammo. That's nowadays ammo's gotten way better. But there's also nowadays, ammo's gotten way better, but also nowadays it's gotten even better. Like, the, instead of just just being like, well, you got Winchester, Remington. Like, I mean, back in the day, that's literally all I knew about. Nowadays, there's so many different ammo manufacturers, and there's boutique ammo manufacturers such as ourselves, allymunitions.com, that'll do, like, specific ammo that really, really uh, focus on developing, just like you should with your rifle platform, developing specific ammo for specific jobs and specific specific platforms so just buy good ammo i mean yeah, then we we'll probably do a 12 minute talk on this but in short if you have a rifle platform and you have a couple different ammos available for that platform says so you know 223 is not a good example because there's billions of different options but if there's a couple different ammo ammos available that appropriately match up with the twist rate of the barrel, buy a box of each, go to the range and test it. See which one your rifle likes the most and see which one performs the best. Like, again, so many different rifles. I mean, ammo manufacturers are going to, like, load to different standards, use different powders and everything else. Like, you know, you may find that your rifle shoots all these ammos one ammo away, but then you kind of look at it like, well, this one's a little bit less gas in my face, especially on an AR-15 platform. You know, this one's dirty as shit, and I don't enjoy shooting at all. You know, test the ammo, see which one it likes. Make sure the projectile is appropriate for your twist rate, which nowadays most platforms are going to be hard like to mess it up, but you, you can, especially when you start looking at shorter barrel platforms. It's typically speaking, the shorter the barrel, the faster the twist should be. So keep that in mind. Like if you want to run like on that bleeding edge of too heavy for a certain twist rate, the minute you start cutting that barrel back, you probably need to dial it back on the weight of the projectile. But at the end of the day, like there's a big difference between a 55 grain projectile and a 75 grain projectile as it pertains to BC when you want to shoot longer ranges. So do your homework, figure out what ammo you need to be shooting, figure out what your barrel likes, do some testing, like spend some time in range. There's nothing wrong with getting on these Facebook groups and asking people's opinions or what they found to be best suited for their platform. But I would literally take like the top five answers and buy all five boxes if I can, and then go test that. Just be aware. If you put garbage in, you're going to get garbage out. Same thing goes with like your components, you yourself as a shooter and everything else like garbage in garbage out i mean that's literally your dope your ammo like it all falls into place garbage in garbage out like if you're just a sloppy shitty shooter and you're trying to shoot a rifle like again like this one this is one of my best shooting hours if you're a two MOA shooter you're essentially putting garbage into the platform you're going to receive garbage out of it doesn't matter how good the platform or the ammo is garbage in garbage out that applies to everything ammo components everything your i don't know what the correct 
what you're putting into the platform. How would you say that? Like your input into the platform. If it's garbage, like if you're like fucking jittery and flinchy and everything else, that's garbagey and you're going to get garbage out. Yeah, definitely take an Adderall before you <laughs> just impound if, a Red Bull before shooting long range. With your dope, if you put garbage in like the wrong velocity, you're going to get garbage out. Like it, that's literally could be the same mm. across the board. If you sh- put a shit trigger in, you put a shitty stock on, like garbage in, garbage out. Uh I feel like we've covered it, everything like you were talking like kind of like fundamental to 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 success is having the knowledge surrounding it. So just as like understanding your dope, understanding why things work the way they are will help you learn how to be a better shooter because you'll know, oh hey, I'm you know, on that last shot, you know, I my position like it was kinda like walking out from under me or you know, I wasn't set up that good. I need to change this. So like just research, spend yeah. time doing that. Or, you know, again, because like you said, if you have shitty information, if you if you think that your data is supposed to be this and it's not, and then you're going off that to make corrections, and then you just start going well, down rabbit you know, holes. My, and, my favorite is, like, the people who can't even shoot fucking, you know, they're again, they're four MLA shooters trying to get, trying to, you know, correct a ballistics app. At like six hundred yards, yeah. And it's like, what are you going off of? Yeah, because like, you, like you can only true it. <laughs> you can't even. Yeah, it's, you know. Now, again, shit in, shit out. I mean, then maybe that should be the fucking title of this podcast: <laughs> shit right. in, shit out. Because I know, I already know. Like, if you call it accurizing an AR, which I kind of think you should, just so it can be a bit of a clickbaity type deal because i already know some people are like but you didn't tell us how to accurize the or whatsoever like because they're yeah. they're like they're thinking like in their mind it's like it should be some sort of mechanical situation like like the fucking you know truing the receiver face and everything else but the reality is reality situation is like there's so many different it's really just a matter of perspective so many yeah there's again so like, many different variables that come into play on an ar-15 platform like the reason you're picking the stock is not only for proper cheek weld proper consistent cheek weld on a magnified optic but also like you said with the ctr stock why wouldn't you use that well because if i wanted to shoot with the bag it doesn't work well with the bag there's the same thing with like you know any of these other decisions it's like i well, I wouldn't use that because this is how i do it it's, yeah it, you know and it, there are certain circumstances where as it pertains to accurizing an ar like if i want to build an ar that's literally meant to be meant to be shot standing up alone like I'm never gonna go behind a bag, nothing. I'm literally gonna zero my optic by picking it up and shooting and putting it back down. Something like a CTR, I'd probably still go for the MLES, okay, or the SLM. Something like a CTR may be better, better fit for you, uh, as opposed to like something like this one. You know, there's so many things that go into this, but the reality of the situation is you need to know what your purpose is and. S- you know, stop trying, like, there is no, there are certain things that you can use across the board. Like, it's good for this and this and this, and, but it's not good for that. Like, stop trying to make these catch-all situations, figure out what it's good for, what it's going to be going for. Like, never put a CTR stock on a fucking prone or bipod shooting rifle such as this one. Like, that's just fucking stupid. Oh, wait, there's there's one important <laughs> thing you need to cover to finish this video out. <laughs> Harris five pawns. Garbage. <laughs> you seem like the AR guys really like the Harris's. It's just because of fucking military. It's yeah. they're garbage. Fucking stop it. It's I, not the 80s anymore. I was laughing really hard because I saw a Q's post today. And it was them shooting from a bipod. And it's their bipod. And so they shoot and then the gun skips out like back like another six inches. And I'm just like, how do these people not understand it yet? And then I and then I realized the best thing I could come up with, like, imagine if when they were building vehicles and you know they hit some bumps and they were like, "Oh man, that rattled a lot. Let's uh like weld like as something as stiff as we can between the tires and the <laughs> and, and the chassis." Oh, fucking and then I'm bipods. Like, and then I realized I'm like, I think the best way to explain it is like you're basically becoming like a piston or like a, a buffer for your yes for the recoil because you're not like you're not going to eliminate the recoil. It's going to be there. Yeah, and. You know, that's uh my that was gonna be my last point is on an AR, 
again, going back to how we even started this is like they're much harder, in my opinion, to shoot accurate and precise than a bolt gun. Like if we're going to sit on a bench and we're going to shoot tiny grips because this is a mechanical device, whereas a fucking, I mean, obviously a bolt gun is too, but there's more shit going on with this because of this semi auto loading. You know, once you fire the round, the fucking bolt carrier back goes back into the uh, buffer where there's a spring and a buffer weight. So follow through having my opinion, having the right stock and right back setup and knowing how to properly shoot off those is even more important than on a fucking bolt gun because the follow through situation, whereas on a bolt gun, you just pull the fucking trigger. It fucking, you know, I don't know how the fuck you simplify this, dumb it down, but literally like you pull the trigger, it makes the firing pin go forward. It shoots the round. Now you don't have to do anything until you want to load another round. That's when you grab the bolt, pull it back. You can totally wait till after the shot on that. Whereas on a semi-auto platform, when you pull the trigger, it, again, same thing, it hits the firing pin. It strikes it because it's, it is auto-loading. That sets, in, sets this chain reaction into, into being where gas comes back or even, you know, even if gas does a piston, it's going to send the boat carrier back into the buffer tube. Like you have this whole situation happening that you need to remain on the rifle for and remain steel and everything else. Like it's even more like a good, I don't even know how to put this in the words properly right now. I'm, I'm in a different mindset. It's even more important to have your fundamentals in place, hard set, meaning a good fucking bag rider, a good bag because Said it once, I said it again. There's so many people out there. When you start combing through the groups, my 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 data, I checking my data today in my velocity. If I true my velocity to the impacts, it shows that the velocity is way higher than it should be. So I think it's the BC of the projectile. Chances fucking are they don't have a good stock, or they don't know how to fucking set up the rear bag properly. And what's happening is. Is the butt stock and rifles dipping down or it's sliding off the fucking bag because they don't know how to grip a fucking rifle and it's kicking the barrel up and it's causing, again, especially when we're talking about long range shots, it's causing these high impacts and I've seen it happen so many fucking times and it's all due to the fact that one, a lot of butt stocks are designed poorly. Two, they don't have the right butt stock or three, they're just, they're shooting fundamentals for long range are flawed. Like it doesn't show its ugly head at hundred yards because it's fucking hundred yards. But the minute we step out to a thousand yards, or well, I mean, I've seen it take effect anywhere from five hundred beyond. The minute we step out there, like these these small little fuck ups start really coming into play. A wonky ass stonk can cause a little bit of fucking high impact or whatever at a longer range. It comes down to like fundamentals and having the correct equipment for the job at hand. But anyway, so that's a whole other fucking tangent for another day. Maybe that's a twelve minute talk. There's so many things we need to cover. Bipods is one, but I need to go back through and shoot all the bipods and like keep extensive notes because like there's, <laughs> you know what? I'm just gonna say it again. Say it. I've said it once, said it a million times. Magpul is the best bipod. <laughs> now you done it. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Come, come at me. Come at me, people. Most of you people that are going to talk all that bullshit don't even own all the fucking bipods. Go on. Go on. Get out of here. That's another, get. that's another thing. When I was moving over there, I'm like, like there's a lot of bipods. I'm. A, we need to hurry up and do the podcast because I'm getting rid of a bunch. Like, I've already started selling off uh, my fucking... Uh, I'm actually missing you know, one. Here's the funniest part. I've been trading these for Magpuls. <laughs> funny these i mean most of these i've you know ran a lot so it's used i'm not gonna sell sell it for what i gave for it so i'm just like bobby magpul <laughs> i said what i said and i'll show we'll show y'all i've already put out like one little video that made people's heads explode apparently on fucking instagram but the bipod podcast is coming up here pretty soon because I, I just you know it's time to get rid of all that bullshit i got like I don't know. Ne- I don't never use most. The only thing I use nowadays is pretty much Magpul. It's 
<laughs> but anyways. Uh, <laughs> Sell my bipods and get a new car. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, that's all I got. That's all I got on this list. Uh, yeah. Let us know down the comments uh, what you think about all this. You know, you think it's fucking stupid and we're nerds and we should just shut up? You can maybe keep that to yourself. <laughs> uh, for sure, go check out AllyMediations.com. And if you're in Midland, go buy Ally Outdoors. Uh, lots of new swag, lots of new shit coming up on the website weekly. Uh, any other announcements? Well, folks, we appreciate it. We'll see you next time.